There we go. Okay. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, gentlemen, if you're watching. And you're very welcome to uh, an evening with Christian women in the UK. I have got the very lovely Pastor Giselle. And she is the lead pastor at um, Pearls of Grace Ministries UK. And I've also got, why aren't you showing on my screen? Sidoni, <laughs> the founder of Christian Women in the UK. And so my name is Ngum and I'm an admin at Christian Women in the UK. And today we have got a very special topic because something's in the air. What are we talking about, ladies? <laughs> Love. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the love train tonight uh, oh yeah there was a song was there a love train or love locomotion or something yeah it's cute people all over the world joining <laughs> on the love train you see our love train is taking you to heaven okay so so, oh, different so again, tonight we're going to be talking about love and um i think it's very interesting because just a few days from now, there's going to be the big Valentine's Day celebration for those who are into that sort of stuff. So, and I think Valentine's Day is really about um, celebrating romantic love mainly, but I think over the years, it's kind of been, you know, um, extrapolated. People celebrate all kinds of love, siblings, whatever, which I think is a good thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, love is one of those, it's just such a broad term, love, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think I am going to start with Sidoni, who's looking very studious over that Bible. <laughs> I want to see if she's actually reading something. Yeah. Are you reading or studying? She, she's yeah. looking at the pictures. You're looking I, at the pictures. Yes, yeah, I am actually. <laughs> Look at this cool way. <laughs> Intense. <laughs> exactly. So, it's, um, it's interesting. Um, what does it mean to you? What does it mean? What's your biblical understanding of it, or just even your own personal understanding of it? I think it's it's important that we always go back to the Bible because obviously that as Christians that should be our um, life manual, isn't it? So, um, First 1 Corinthians 13, I think we're talking about this um, from verse 4, sort of defines what love is. Um, it says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. So this obviously relates back to the gifts. Um, and up to verse 13, it says, um, you know, you have the three, three main gifts, faith, hope, and, uh, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Um, and I was looking, interesting, I was looking earlier, and it said something like 42%. Um, the UK has a divorce rate of 42%. Wow. Almost half. Almost half. One in um, two. One in, which is, yeah, literally almost one in two marriages fail. Um, and... <clears throat> One of the, well, it gave three main reasons. Um, people growing apart, money, um, I think children. So money, children, and sex were the three main reasons. Wow. But from sort of the ONS, that is Office of National Statistics, I was reading, and some of the excerpts that they took from people who took part in the study, what came across was this whole idea of, it seems like we've shifted with society has moved away from this definition of love. Um, you know, if, uh, you hear things today, like people say, you know, absolutely, there's no way I would forgive X, Y, Z, you know, 
um, and people are easily angered and there's no forgiveness. And I think when we talk about romantic love from a Christian perspective, the Bible does, and not, not even romantic love, like you said before, you know, even sibling of any kind of love, we need to always bring it back to what the Bible says that love is. Um, obviously, in Ephesians, we're given instructions for the household and, you know, the man is the head and wives submit, that likewise submit to each other as unto Christ. Um, and we talked about that a few weeks ago, didn't we, about that Ephesians verse. So I think we, it's important, certainly, as Christians, that we always go back to the, the the Bible's definition of love because the world will show us what they would have us think love is what we should act what we should say how we should look um and it was like Giselle was saying earlier you know some people would get very very offended that it was her birthday she said and her husband forgot and <laughs> she, she was very forgiving but you very, can imagine the amount of very. arguments that, that caused in some households so um, yeah, I think certainly it's important that we, we always have the Bible's definition of love um, at the back of our minds, whether that's the way we train our kids, the way we relate to each other and our spouses, and so that we don't then become part of that one in two statistic that we're seeing, um, which is as recent as 2020. Wow. So Giselle, over to you. We want to yeah. know what love is. <laughs> we know you can tell us. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah, that is very interesting. Interesting statistics you gave, Stoney, about mm. divorce rate in the UK. And, you know, we're, we're brought up now. There's loads of people now that when a relationship starts going wrong, instead of fixing it, they just dump it. Mm. it's like oh. you, you I remember when DVD players first came out this is a couple of hundred years ago and the first DVD player I bought was something like 300 pounds and that was an awful lot of money what? and every and every time it went wrong or something went wrong with it you got it fixed you repaired it and it lasted for a long time now mm. you get it well it's okay you don't use DVDs any longer, really. But when you, you did buy a DVD player, you can get one for £20. And they ask you in the shop, do you want to spend £13 and take a year warranty on it? No, thanks. If it breaks for 20 quid, I'll buy another one. Mm. But that's how the people treat relationships nowadays. And that is bad. And I agree with you. We should always get back to biblical love. And talking about biblical love, there are four types of biblical love blind you with my wonderful knowledge now <laughs> <laughs> the first one is storage which is empathy or a bond and the second one is philia which is friendship bond then you've got eros which is the romantic love but then the greatest love of all is the agape and that is god's unconditional love mm. and what we've got to remember is that even though our earthly relationships are going up and down and they're going round about and we're having quarrels, we're having fights and we're having arguments. And a lot of times an inner relationship can be the loneliest time for some, for a lot of people. If we know Christ, we know we're truly loved because didn't God send Jesus to die for us? And that yeah. is to me, is the pure definition of love. Yeah, because oh, Christianity God. is a love religion, isn't it? I mean, yep. mm -hmm. it does say, for God so loved the world. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And he, he and, he, yeah, and he came mm -hmm. not to condemn the world, but to save it. Mm -hmm. Because see, when we, when we quote John 3.16, I think we should always quote verse 17. And that's it, that he mm -hmm. came to save the world and not condemn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me go hand in hand but that's love and and i call it the 11th commandment when the mm. disciples asked jesus what's the best of it what's the most important commandments did jesus himself not say love one another now you will love one another as i have loved you yeah and and yeah. that's that's um that's a challenge isn't it because to love people the way christ yep. loves that's <laughs> 
hard because mm-hmm. I mean even if we just talk about forgiveness which I think we spoke about a few weeks ago as well you know just to be able to forgive somebody 77 times seven times that's the um, it's hard it is really hard that's hard and yet yeah. we're called to be like Christ or to be Christ-like mm-hmm. which means we have to imitate him in the way he loves, the way he forgives, the way he relates with people. And yeah, that's <laughs> big time. That's a benchmark. Big which we can only do by the grace of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is why, I don't know if you guys watch it, but there's a series that's really popular now called The Chosen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think what to me, I really like about the chosen when I just got, you know, came to know Christ. The chosen was really special for me because what the chosen does that's kind of different from all the other films. The other films are kind of bios of Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. But I think what the, the chosen does that is so good is that the chosen looks at Jesus's relationships with people, how mm-hmm. Jesus could have affected people. And I think that was so good because it just showed different permutations of Jesus' love. Sometimes it was, you could say, strict, you know, in rebuke. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. Jesus could be, could be sharp-tongued, as we know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it was very, I think for me, very tender because I think of like the scene of the woman at, at the well, you know, mm-hmm. and Jesus. That to me is just one of the most beautiful love stories I've ever heard because mm-hmm. that woman, she was going through all sorts of things at mm-hmm. that time and you yep. talked about God's unconditional love you really mm-hmm. see it in that story because Jesus is like I know you can't even tell me the things that you've been through mm-hmm. because you know sometimes we carry things in our hearts that we are we are ashamed of yeah. you can't there are times I don't know about other people there have been times when I've even wanted to pray I'm like I can't even bring myself to pray about this thing mm-hmm. and I think that's what was happening there and Jesus was like okay you don't even need to tell me I'll I'll speak it out for you because you want to confess it but you mm. can't even bring yourself. And so I think for me, um, the first form of love that you described, Jesus, um, empathy. Mm-hmm. You really see two aspects of Jesus, that the empathy and the sort of non-judgmental. It's not like he said what you're doing is correct. He was mm-hmm. just like, yeah, okay. You yeah, I think we, a lot of us need to learn that thing. We need to learn. Yeah. And then Jesus also picked up on one thing that I think sometimes we talk about other types of love. Because he said to the woman, you're looking it's almost like he said so you're looking for something mm-hmm. and when you find that thing which is me literally i'll give you water that will make you never thirst yep. because we think about it if you're married you remind five times you're definitely looking for love right mm-hmm. but uh, yeah she was looking for love in just the wrong places mm-hmm. and i think also she didn't even love herself mm. that's it exactly yeah. we need to learn to love ourselves yeah we and really I, do. That's the thing. And I, it's something that I would like to get both of you's impression on because I think sometimes people confuse self-indulgence with self-love because mm-hmm. you see a lot of, you know, going back to social media, unfortunately, but it seems to be the platform where this happens, where you have, I mean, there is self-care. Let's not lie. There's good self-care where you take time out for yourself. But I mean, all sorts of things now pass as self-care. So what to you, and this is to both of you, starting with you, Giselle, where do you draw the line between self, self-love self and self-indulgence? Oh, wow. Well, I don't think I indulge myself. I really, I really don't. Okay, I like to put on some makeup every day. I like to do my hair every day, and I like to have clean clothes on every day. Um, but... I, but I don't consider that self-indulgence. I consider that making the best of what I have and being a representative for the, a, good, a, a good representative for the kingdom of heaven. Um, but I don't go to the hairdresser. I cut my own hair. I don't go to, and I don't dye my hair. I don't go to the nail salon. I do all my own manicures and pedicures. Um, so I don't, I don't really indulge myself. Oh, wow, Giselle. I don't. I don't do those things, see. <laughs> I don't have the talent to do those things that you do. But I think, Sidonie, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about, you know, do you, do you, do you may disagree with me. Do you think there is 
um, a culture of self-indulgence that's passing as self-love? I think so. But I, I, I think there's also a culture at the moment that is very, very um, egocentric. Mm -hmm. I think there's this new age, love uh, yourself at all costs. You are a mini god or you are a god. Yeah. Um, you are the force behind the force. Yeah, and and you are all that. And, and yeah. <laughs> and, but what that does is that builds up in people this ability that, or, or this attitude or mentality that they've got the ability to save themselves. Mm. And so to be able to occupy that mental space that they've created for themselves, they feel that they have to um, do X, Y, Z to get there, to occupy that space of a mini God, you know, because they've built up this visual image of what a God with a small G looks like. Yeah. Um, and so I think it, it, it's very, very dangerous because it buys into this idea of, of um, we don't need God, we, we're enough, um, we can buy our, or we can work our way into heaven. Um, so I, I think self-care is important. Um, but your self-love should be rooted um, in, in your understanding of who you are in Christ, in your understanding of your limitations, in your understanding of your mortality and the finality of your mortality, and, and knowing that beyond this life, without God, there is nothing else for you. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think when people start to understand that or appreciate that and, and try to start living beyond the here and the now, then you will get a kind of awareness because I think there's this, everybody says they're so woke and they're so spiritually woke at the moment, but they really aren't because, um, you know, COVID comes along and everybody's like, well, what happens to me if I die now? You know, you, you need to see the statistics for what is there after life when COVID hits. On Google searches it was phenomenal I mean when I looked into it it was amazing um so all of a sudden people that were spiritually woke then started questioning their own beliefs and their own mortality yeah so I you know I think this whole self-indulgent thing yes it is a thing but it, you know people try to pass it off as self-care but I think it's rooted in the idea that they are enough mm -hmm. and they do not need a god to mm. tell them how to live or to instruct them on how to live. Um, and, and that's a shame because, you know, as Christians, we believe that we're made in God's image and we're put here for his glory and to serve a purpose that he's put us here to serve. Um, and so it's like, you know, the, the, the person who knows the best way to handle a machinery or, you know, is the person that writes the manual. Yeah. And yet you can have a go at operating the machinery without reading the manual that's yeah. fine but it might go horribly wrong <laughs> yeah definitely be ready for accident <laughs> exactly so yeah you know I think I think we just need to um and, and I think people need to know that there's also this thing of people think of he's a god of anger yes but the bible's clear that he disciplines those he loves mm -hmm. and like you yeah. said earlier even in his rebuke Jesus was loving Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know people people very often will say you know I, I'll tell it as it is and and they use that as an excuse to be rude and to be offensive yep you can be loving in your rebuke um and I think it's important that as Christians we try to show this Christ-like love because that's what's going to bring people to God yeah we say look you know this is a religion of love you're not going to be judged come as you are um quite you, you you'll meet christ at the, at the cross and there he will replenish you he will wash you clean he will reconcile you to himself but if we're not showing that image of love to the world then we're, we're failing as yes. we're failing. Yeah. yeah like you said christianity is a love religion and I think if you look at other religions, it's, it, it's the one thing that distinguishes it in the sense that you don't have to do anything to earn God's love. And when I say you don't have to do, it, it's not your works, put it that way. No amount of your works. And you know, this is very interesting because I think sometimes we're brought up on a very religious 
um, diet, if you like. And we're taught that, you know, if you go to church on Sunday, if you're obedient to your parents, blah, blah. I certainly came from a very works oriented background. Mm -hmm. And then okay, you had this sort of, okay, God is love sort of situation, but I still had a very works mentality. And it's only, I tell you, when I just first got to know Christ that I was talking with a friend and she was like, you know what? No amount of good things that you do in this world will mm -hmm. ever be good enough because God is such a perfect person. Mm -hmm. He's the perfect light. And that's when it struck me what salvation really meant. Mm -hmm. That, you know, salvation is this thing where Jesus has literally taken on your sins because you should have died in his place. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you think no one is going to do that out of, no, I mean, how can you not love somebody to do such a thing for them? So it really mm -hmm. brought home the message of salvation to me because I think when you look at other religions, there's always some kind of work to do. Mm -hmm. You talked about the new age. It's about you trying to be perfect. And of course you can't attain those standards. You end up being mm -hmm. disappointed. You know, people can pretend and lie, but a lot of the time you end up in other religions It's how, how often you fast, how often you do this, you do that, but then you just end up not feeling good enough. Mm -hmm. isn't it nice to just be like okay god i know i cannot do this by myself mm -hmm. i'm just mm -hmm. here give me the grace of course you don't want to abuse that grace but at the mm -hmm. same time i think for me it's building that really sincere relationship with god where you get to a point where you can just talk to god and be real right yeah about your weaknesses and you can say there are times when i've said been trying to fast and i'm like god you know this ain't even working today <laughs> I need to eat. <laughs> you know? No. Mm, and you yes. and you know what's so funny? I think it's it's once you kind of I can't say burst into that relationship with God, it's great because mm. you talk to God about things that you would never have talked about before. Mm -hmm, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. before and I it's interesting like, because yeah. he's he's not asking us when as Christians, we're not asked, like you say, to, to work our way into salvation we're asked to live a life that is like Christ out of love and that the Bible says if you love me you will obey my commands Amen. if you love me you will follow my statutes yeah. and because they're there for your own good God does not need the Bible he you know this is this is all here for our good and so um we then live this life as a response to the love that he's poured out to us. Mm -hmm. so it, it, it's almost like if, if you had an equation and you know one plus one is on this side of the equal side and then two is on that side, he's already done the one plus one. Mm -hmm. Our response, which is the two, is coming after the equal sign. And, and so people often, very often get this you know, wrong and say, you know, I have to follow the 10 commandments and I have to do this and I have to do that. But what, what they forget to know is that how your eagerness and your, your transformation, which is the work that Christ will begin in you when, you when you give your life to Christ, is as a result of your love for him because you want to please him, because you want to please God. And so you, you want to live that life as a result of your love because he says, you know, Christ even said to Peter, didn't he? do you love me Peter and then Peter said you know I love you he said if you love me feed my sheep and then he asked again do you love me he he, he could have said I command you to feed my sheep yeah exactly you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then isn't, it, isn't it lovely though that that it's almost like God gives us the option mm -hmm. doesn't mm -hmm. force us and so when you see people that, you know, I, I speak to a lot of women, and I'm sure you do as well, Jesus, and I'm sure you don't, but you, you kind of meet women that go through, or they're in relationships or situationships or marriages, um, and, and they're either being abused or they are the abuser. Yes. Um, or the manipulator. And, you know, they'll be like, you know, if you, you know, if you love me, you'll do this, this, that, and that. And, and they dictate yeah. the terms of their love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Christ doesn't do that. No, he doesn't. Nowhere does God force us into a relationship with him. Nowhere does he, you know, even like I said, even when Jesus was asking Peter, he said, if you love me, do you love me? Peter could have turned around and said, no, 
He said, you know, I love you. This is after he denied him three times already, which is a you know, classic human story, isn't it? <laughs> yes. No, that's <coughs> to me. I always think with Jesus and Peter, because I always think like, who turns around and hands over their legacy to somebody who denied them three times, right? When we talk about forgiveness, because you think about it, like you set up a company and this employee does the worst thing ever, completely betrays you and then you go, here you go, here are the deeds to this company. <laughs> mm-hmm. you run it. But isn't that because, and, and this is an interesting point, and this is what I say to my kids sometimes, and it's a very basic lesson that even a lot of grown-ups miss. People very often fail to, to trust the basic goodness in humanity. Yeah. And I think Jesus sees that, you know, and, and I say to my kids sometimes, you, you haven't got to be naive and you haven't got to be too trusting because the world is evil, right? But you have got to trust that the basic intention of somebody who you love, whether that's a sibling or, or, or a relative, by and large, is, is positive. And I think Jesus does that. And he shows us that time and time again. He shows us that his love for humanity is based on this goodness, this base layer of goodness, which, you know, if we're all made in God's image, then nobody is inherently evil because God is not any evil. Nobody is beyond redemption because God isn't that. And and so when you start dealing with people from that baseline of, I know there's good in you, that changes your relationship altogether. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're not wanting to take offense at every little thing they say. You're actually stopping to think, mm, did you really mean that? Or were you trying to say something else and that just came out wrong? <laughs> well, that's a really good point. That's a very good point. Yeah. Because I think, Brilliant. particularly in the world that we live in, it's so easy to mistrust people. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think also sometimes people's own experiences can really color the way they begin to see things. Because if mm-hmm. you've been hurt before, you get into defense mode and mm-hmm. all of them. So it's really, it's really good to bring it back to that seeing the the basis, the basics, I should say. Mm-hmm. People that people are inherently good. That is mm-hmm. I mean, for me, that's a learning point. That is such a good point. I think maybe it's, it's just given us another topic. <laughs> it probably has <laughs> another one people need rehabilitation there are people who, you know there used to be joke about like a woman who's been with so many wrong guys right and then when she finally mm. meets the nice guy she doesn't know what to do mm. and so it's that thing where hurt and trauma mm. can take away people's ability to see mm. the big goodness in people yeah so, mm-hmm. One day we might talk about love rehabilitation. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 also that will save a lot of marriages. If if yeah. if if a lot of women, you know, I, I'm just going to go back to G uh, because you know if if G's starting point with her husband was that he deliberately forgot her birthday and oh. he absolutely was out to ruin her day. Did. He probably and- did. <laughs> But you know what I mean? You chose to believe the yeah. good in him and yeah. be like, yeah, it's a date. He forgot it. But, you know, there's bigger things in life. Um, exactly. Exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah. to, to, get, to get upset and annoyed and hold a grudge and things, stuff like that over something as simple as that. No, there's more important. <laughs> oh, it's, it's caused a fair few fights. <laughs> you know, there really is. There really is. You know, and you know, when when something as simple as that upsets us and us, and we get all sort of you know well oh that's it. I'm never going to speak to him again or you know, I'm not going to cook his favourite dinner and I'm not going to do X Y and Z and all the rest but then it boils up anger in you and mm-hmm. very 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 quickly before you know it you're saying things that you regret but once mm-hmm. the words are out of your mouth you can't take them back mm-hmm. and a lot of times all the sorries and all the forgive me's in the world doesn't help the other person the words hurt so we mm-hmm. do need to stand back bite our tongue and count to 50 and maybe go and kick the proverbial cat and just carry on with life that's it mm-hmm. yeah. i like one to 50 <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you know, nor- normal people count to 10 only but i'm not normal i have to count to 50 <laughs> five times yeah Guys, five times yeah. wait five. till i get wait wait till i get to 70 
but there's yeah. there's more there's more things in life to worry there about. There are, there are. And I think Hollywood is 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 always oh, a concrete. It's a oh. culprit for, for yeah. you know, romanticizing what love is. And, you know, romance is good, you know, don't get me wrong. They, you know, if, you, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But I also think Hollywood has, you know, like we quite often say between the three of us in our conversations, spoilt what love is. And yeah. so we yeah. think often that we go back to the biblical definition of love. So he didn't get you 12 roses or, or whatever on Valentine's Day. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. Yeah, exactly. um, so he didn't get you a box of chocolate it doesn't mean he doesn't love you or he didn't take you out to the fanciest restaurant in town but um, but, but, but why do we have but why does it have to wait till one day a year when yeah, commercialism exactly. tells them to do it why what not time? you know, grab a bunch of flowers throughout the year or something like that? what is, mm. you know, I, I think every other day except Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, Rebels. But, <laughs> but, but, but I think a lot of women put too much store into this St. Valentine's Day where they have to have a dozen red roses. They have to be taken out for a meal. And you know, because there's so many people going out to restaurants and things, the service is bad, the food's bad and all the rest of it. So why not wait to any other time throughout the year and we, it's like Michael and I we don't we don't buy each other birthday presents and we don't buy each other Christmas gifts we don't fall into that stupid commercial things and we don't celebrate St Valentine's um, but whatever we need throughout the year we'll get it throughout the year no but that's good and I prefer that because you know what I really like the idea of people doing love their own way in a very original way it's the same thing with like marriage proposals right i mean you've both been married so i don't know how you would propose to you always, you, always see the, you always see the thing of um you know the guy goes down on one knee with a massive diamond you've been dating this guy for a while it was always a possibility right but you're like oh i can't believe you try well good well, night well, well, night you know. So Michael, my, Michael will probably raise his head now and look at me and sort of give me a dirty look because he because he's on the other side here. He's, he's he's in bed. Um how, how he proposed to me, it was so romantic. Now he didn't go down on one knee or anything like that. He didn't have the diamond ring and all the rest of it. He got a new diary. And he hands me the diary and he says, here, is there any dates you want to put in that? And I said, what, like a wedding date? He said, aye. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that was our... Hello, Michael, I'm going to get him a glass of whiskey for that. <laughs> no, but you don't want Just a glass of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. That was Tell him. Michael he's going to join us to do a men's session at some point. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, you see him every, every week. He'll come in and put clothes up here in the, the top of his cabinet before he gets uh, uh, in, into bed. I keep telling him, I said, you're famous. You were re reeling the camera last night. I said, some, some, some one of these fine nights you're going to turn around and go, hey. He said, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no. we'll, 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 we'll get him on for a chat one night. Oh, yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> Have a lovely. Yeah. Tell him I owe him a glass of whiskey for that. So Lenny, did you get a romantic proposal? I did get a romantic proposal. Oh, down in one knee. I did. I did get a down on one knee. Yes, it was oh. lovely. Yes, I did. Were you one of those girls crying? Oh, I'm terrible now. <laughs> My tears don't flow that easily. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. I just think, you know what? It's so funny because at one point, like you watch, and you know, especially I think, again, social media just has a lot to blame for this because some of them you look at. I think so, yeah. Right? You know, I saw one, this guy got the helicopter, everything. I mean, cool. If you you also I'm not going to say no to a helicopter, by the way, guys, okay? I'm not going to say no to a huge ring. I like jewelry. But what I'm just saying is that, like, it's almost like as if people sometimes feel under pressure to propose a certain way. Hello? I think you guys may have frozen. No, we're still here. We're yeah. Still here. So I just think it's nice for people to do it originally. Because yeah. I know mm. somebody who proposed to his wife, they didn't even have a ring. I think they went away for a weekend. And then they just sat down and they talked about it. An onion ring. 
Boston, <laughs> <laughs> that would bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't a ring. So it was just like morph. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and do you know too that when Michael and I did get married, we ran off like two teenagers to Gretna Green. We eloped. Just Ooh. the two of us. Yeah, we did. Just the two of us. Because pals of mine in Northern Ireland started, you know, well, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do the other thing. And pals of Michael's and Mar mine here, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do the other thing. And we both looked at one another and thought, you know, it's our wedding. What do we want to do? And Michael had suggested, let's go to Jamaica. But you hear horror stories about you going off to something like that and getting married. So uh, in the end, we decided we, we went off to Gretna Green. We told nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the wedding venue down at Gretna Green uh, I said it has to be a Christian wedding we have to have a, a, a pastor marry us uh, and they organised the pastor for us and I said we need two witnesses so they organised two witnesses from the staff and Michael and I drove down and we got married and we came back and that was it and you know what he, you know what he did he's so romantic you know what he did for our wedding feast, we were going to go to McDonald's for our wedding feast, but then he decided, no, only the best was you. Know, only the best was good enough for me, so he took me to KFC instead. I don't know. KFC, KFC is a thing for weddings. I yes. remember reading the newspaper thing where people left and they went to a KFC. Yep. I know another person who they actually had a lovely wedding. It was like a, a probably only about like five people as guests. And then they went, they, they did the registry and then went to this Chinese place, had a lovely meal, mm -hmm. and, you know, left. And that was it. Yeah. So I just think people should do things that uh, one, that is really about them, yep. things that they can be true to, and things that are just original to. To them there's nothing wrong with all the things that we've said but i just think it's nice for for something to be really original i'd rather somebody did just something really original rather yeah. than just mm -hmm. pulling some choreograph thing yeah, yeah. exactly okay. i think we've run out of time haven't we haven't yeah. we're well over our time <laughs> um any ideas about wedding proposals you come to us we're consulting <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Sedona and I will organize your wedding. And I'll even come down in a, a, oh, my no. wedding. <laughs> oh, ladies. So, yes, we'll right. jump in our right? Thank you all very much for watching. And it's goodbye from Sidoni, from Giselle, and from Good myself. Night. Goodbye, <laughs> everyone. Have a Bye. wonderful weekend. If you, if you celebrate. Bye. 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 Love you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.